Uh, welcome to episode 46 of By the Balls. John Davidson with you. And um, we've got a very special guest today. Uh, Ex Newcastle Knights, North Queensland Cowboys, Hull KR, Salford, West Tigers, Lee Centurions, most recently Toronto Wolfpack, undefeated heavyweight boxer, <laughs> Corey Patterson. Corey, how are you? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. How How is uh, retirement? What's been seven, eight months now? How are you, how are you finding that? Yeah, it's been, it's been good, mate. Uh, a bit different, obviously. Yeah. I... Um, Actually wanted to get away from the game, you know, for five six months, and I went back to Australia and did a bit of real work in the mines and construction and Perth um, WA. Yeah, Perth WA. Yeah. A lot of my my friends out there were, were, you know, in charge of those things. So, mate, I've never had a real job as per se. I went straight from high school yeah. straight to full time footy. So, um, for me, I was just I wanted to sink my teeth into something different for a few months, see if I liked it. Um, my wife ended up telling me. You played professional rugby league for thirteen years. You've been playing since you were four. Why would you waste? <laughs> why would you waste that knowledge? That's yeah. your apprenticeship. And I thought, you know what? She's right. I didn't tell her that, but she was right. <laughs> um, and so for me, I just wanted uh, the penny dropped, and um, rugby league is my passion and what I'm, what I know, and you know what I believe I was, you know, all right at. Um, so I feel that I've got a bit to give back. Just, just on that, as you said, you've been playing since you were four. I mean. You went from high school. You were scouted as a teenager, and you went. What? How tough is that? Because you literally would have gone eat this, train this, turn up every day, weekend is programmed like normal people like me. You don't you don't understand that structure. Like yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy, and that's why a lot of people players go off the rails or they struggle with depression or whatever. And you know, yeah, definitely. it is hard. Yeah, I can definitely see why some fellows struggle more than others. Mm. Um, and I was always pretty conscious of what. I was lucky, see, I chose to retire, so I had another year on my deal. You're only, uh, yeah, you're only 31, you're young. Yeah, I know, but I'd rather jump than get pushed. Yep. You know, I'd rather go out on my terms and... Was well, that the thinking, I don't want to play a year? Yeah. Too long? Yeah. You know, I still think, if some, I could still play now, and yep. I could still do a job for someone, without a shadow of a doubt. Yep. Um, probably for another two or three years, I think, but, you know, at this stage of my life, with my young kids and my, my family here, and I don't know, I just wanted to try something different, and like, I've been in it for so long. Now I'm enjoying being on the other side of the fence and, and you know, coaching and, and that side of it. And like I said, I feel that I've got a vast amount of experience that I can hopefully yeah. help, you know, help teams or help individuals or that's on and off the field too. You know, I feel that I can bring that to the next generation. And as you said, you've got two young kids. I mean, one's a bit of a budding sports star as well. He's on the books at Liverpool. So yeah, you, you, you can uh, get to see his games and take around, which is obviously you know, yeah. something you couldn't do before. Yeah, things like that, man. It's like, you sort of take it for granted. Oh, not tough for granted, but you sort of realise how scheduled and routine you are and everything yep. is dictated by the, the, the draw, the schedule, and that's, that's the way it's all I've known. So now doing a bit of you know freelancing stuff, I can sort of, chime in here chime in there and you know and and go watch my son play soccer when he needs to and things like that which is good yeah so Jack's Patterson look out for him <laughs> under nines at Liverpool and he's ahead uh, he's got a long way to go man. <laughs> but he loves he loves his football and he loves playing and he loves everything about it so yeah. for me that's that's the best thing I can see is that he just loves it yeah and so definitely he and loves, yeah. for you for you for coaching though so you've been you've been doing a bit of stuff with Witness tell yeah, us about yeah. that so I've been uh, been down to Witness the last month just helping Kieran Pertell out He's um, a good friend of mine and someone who I, you know, I rate as a person yep. first and foremost, but then I rate him as a coach highly as well. So You own him at Lee? Yeah, he was our assistant at Lee and Perth, I've always had a good relationship with him and he's, um, I sort of came back from Australia after doing a bit of work out there in the NRL stuff as well and said, what are you guys up to? And he goes, he's a bit understaffed, he's running the ship by himself out there and I said, oh, can I come? Can I come out and help coach? And he goes, "Would you want to play?" And I said, "No, nah, mate, I don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I don't want to play, but I'll come help you coach." And so I've been doing that for a bit, uh, just helping them out, and about to start my level three coaching um, course. Yep. Just going through the, all the paperwork to finalise, get that started. So level three would be good for me. Um, and yeah, just just trying to sort of see what's out there for the for next year and try and get something established there. And that's the aim, you know, head coach. Well, one that's day. the thing. Yeah. I, I never thought. I had the personality to be a head yep. coach. I'm not a very... I don't really like confrontation or things like that, but I actually had a chat with Trent Robinson when I was in Australia and 
He's someone that's coached me for a few years in Newcastle and things like that. And someone I was... Oh, a, I didn't realise Yeah, that. so I had him for four oh, years at well. Newcastle. And he's someone's opinion that I value pretty highly, obviously, because he's a super oh, coach. And, I was watching him yeah. on TV yesterday. He's I mean, a, just, a dude, man. just from... I've only interviewed him once yeah. or twice, but dealing with the media and, yeah, and, yeah he's one of the best coaches exactly. in the world. Mate. Yeah. And so to have him as a sounding board for me is a big thing. And yep. um, I was originally going to stay in Perth and coach their SG ball team. Um, so I was actually talking to him about that and things there. But um, I basically said to him, I said, Robert, look, mate, I don't know if I have the personality to be a head coach. I said, I don't know if I've got that confrontational or that letting blokes down if you not pick this week. He goes, Pat, he goes, look, Anyone can be a coach. That's the beauty of it. Any personality can be a coach. He goes, look at me and Craig Bellamy. He's like, Craig has his style. I have my yeah. style. There's, there's different, different styles. Different. There's, everyone can be a coach just like everyone can be a player. And for him to say that to me, it sort of gave me a bit of um, confidence and a bit of um, re- reinforcement that you know I actually could be, if I choose to pursue my personality and things like that, would yeah. actually allow me to, to do that. So for the, for the time, you know, I, I know... I know I know a lot about the game, but there's a lot of stuff that as players you don't see that head coaches go through. A lot, well, that, a lot. That's, you know, whether it be recruitment, deal yeah, with the media, like contracts, media, yeah. Off-field stuff. Yeah, you know, well, that's it. Th- yeah. The 3 a.m. call when exactly, uh, someone's right. been kicked out of a nightclub exactly. or something. All yeah. those things. So yeah. as players, we don't see that. So I'm, I'm under no illusion that I'm, I'm going to walk into a head <laughs> yeah. coaching role by no means. But I do believe that I, pl- I know the game inside out. Yeah. I know the environment inside out and I'm willing to work hard for it. So um, I'm happy to do my apprenticeship for however long that is as an assistant um, or coaching academy or reserves coming in next year or wherever. I know I've got to do my apprenticeship and I'm happy to do that. So um, I suppose we'll just see see how where it unfolds. And, and tell us about some of the I mean, coaches you've been owned off the top of my head. I mean, Brian Smith. Yeah, Smithy. Mick Potter. Mick Potter was, Paul a, Rowley. Mick was a legend for me. Yep. He um, gave me my crack at the Tigers and I don't know. Potsy was just one of them blokes that knew had your back. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on there at the Tigers at the time, and um, I always knew he had my back. And I'd like to think he knew that I was yep. played, played hard for him as well. So he was he was a good one for me, Potsy. Uh, Craig Sandercock, I had at Newcastle and then at KR, who was yep. who was outstanding for me as well. Um, you had Neil Henry as well. Neil Henry, bit, yep. bit, bit more of a discipline, disciplinary bit more of a school teacher, type, yeah, yeah. Um, textbook type stuff. Again, that's his style. Uh, now Paul Rowley I had who, who I got along well with and, and grew my game as well so and you had Ian Watson had what, I've, what yeah. I had came in like the, the yeah. probably last three quarters of the season so for me and he's going gangbusters and yeah. he's doing really well you know for, for a local guy and not the biggest of budgets or facilities no. or, or stuff like he's doing really well with that squad and uh, I think I think his progression as a coach is you know something that a lot of English coaches could aspire to is like he's come from Swinton and things like that and now definitely you know he's got the world at his feet pretty much with coaching so mate there's, I've been blessed to have a lot of coaches and, and assisted coaches you know that I've learnt a lot and picked their brains and I can still do that to this day which I'm lucky to do well just just going back a bit I guess to your upbringing and your career I mean you've had a pretty amazing career you fit in a lot and yeah. even just your upbringing if pe- people who are listening to this don't realise I mean you were you were born in Perth and you literally moved what every couple of years all yeah. across Australia with your family growing up I mean yeah my old man was in the army see so every two three years it was time to get posted somewhere different so <laughs> um, didn't really have a lot of stability I think that's sort of why I'm a bit of an adventurer now yep. in terms of what's next what's out there but now I've got two young kids myself and my wife and we're settled here in in the UK now, we don't really want to, um, unless an opportunity is too good yeah. to refuse. Yeah. You know, I, I want to sort of exhaust every avenue here first. Um, so that's sort of, yeah, our bringing was a bit different to normal, but I wouldn't change the thing. So yeah, you went something like Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane. Yeah, so I started playing, yeah, so I went Perth, Brisbane, Canberra, Sydney, Geraldton, <laughs> back to Perth, and then I ended up moving to Newcastle when I was 16 by myself. That's Cause when I saw him in Newcastle. Yeah, because I mean, Perth's not a no. a rugby league area, but you you obviously you got scouted from Perth. So yeah, you, you, you sort of shown enough as a kid, as a well, as a I teenager. Sort of, I grew up playing in Brisbane, Canberra, and Sydney, yep. and then moved back to Perth when I was twelve. So I'd had that core skill yep. set and all that on the east coast, but then moved back to Perth when I was younger. And then a couple of years later, um, yeah, I signed with Newcastle to play under 18s for them for a couple of years. So. That was the journey. <laughs> and I think I remember you said before you landed at Newcastle, you know, what, 15, 16, and it was a pretty steep learning curve. 
Like, <laughs> yeah, man, you sort of go from the big fish in the small pond yeah. over there to you know a tadpole in the ocean that is the NRL or the East Coast. And yeah. I was super lucky, man. I I, I got put in with um, Jared Mullen and his family, and they yep. like they took me in as their own and and fed me and clothed me and and give me gave me every bit of support and and encouragement that I needed. And I don't think for that first year I probably would have went home. 20 yeah. times if it wasn't for them so if, you know they have a lot to um, I've got a lot to them be thankful for to them for a bit of tough love but also a bit of you know nurturing and things like that while I was away from my family and going into Newcastle I mean you, you debut for the Knights you're under Brian Smith what what was that like making your debut pretty uh, memorable against the Dragons a bit of um, yeah, bit sick during the game yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, explain I remember, that one. I remember round one I was 18th man Yep. against the Bulldogs at home and Joey got knocked out by Sonny that game oh I remember yeah. that that was I remember, yeah. I, remember, I remember being an 18th man warming up and I looked across because in Newcastle you usually both warmed up on the backfield across the car park yes. and it was literally about, past the hockey ground it was about 40 yep. metres big and we both had to share the warm up pitch I remember looking over there was Willie Mason Marco Mealy uh, Andrew Ryan Rennie Matua Sonny Bill Roy Satasi, and I was thinking to myself I was on the 18, 19 going no one get injured. No one get injured. <laughs> I was like, I didn't really. Oh, of course, I would have keen to play, but I was also a bit like, that's our original dogs of war. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now just nutcases. So, yeah. Um, I looked over and no one got injured. But following week, anyway, I remember Smithy ring me up, rang me up and said, um, "You know, I'm gonna play you this week. You gonna make your debut?" I was just like, "All right, right man." <laughs> it was crazy, man. Just crazy. I still remember those yesterday. But it was that game at Oakie Jubilee. Yeah, we ended up winning, and yeah. It was I played up playing the whole second half in the background and spewed my guts up about 10 minutes to go because I was just stuffed and <laughs> just on the sideline huh? no I just did it was a 20 minute retap, restart and I chased back to shield the kick and I came back and we had a tap and I just had a quick spew so <laughs> just a bit of everything but it was good but yeah the emotion the emotion, anxiety everything, everything yeah you know, uh, it was so good and I mean playing alongside Andrew Johns yep I know obviously it was, it was only a few games a yeah. lot but I mean one of the greatest players yeah. ever that's yeah, wow, what just, was the that stuff, just the stuff you learn off the field as well, like yeah. that, training with him every day, being in the gym with him, all that stuff is probably what I've picked up more and the way they go about their business. You know, Danny Badiris to me is probably the ultimate professional. Um, I was lucky to play with him for a few years and how he's such a nice person away from the field mm. and the training and that, like just the most beautiful person in terms of being a decent bloke and then as soon as he gets on the field, he'll just throw himself at like Shane Webke off an origin kickoff or he'll just, yeah, no regard for himself or anything and just, just the ultimate professional and just a legend. And, you know, I was lucky that I had, you know, Steve Simpson, those type of guys around me coming through that sort of, Kirk Gidley, Kirk Gidley, yeah. you know, that, that old school tough, don't whinge about it, just get on with it. Yeah. That mentality. And being under Brian Smith, I mean, yeah. uh, Smithy's one of those eccentric characters. How did you? I, oh. I think you remember. I remember you saying once. Um, you know, at the time you were thinking, "Why is he getting me to do this?" But obviously, it, yeah. And then, it, like Smithy got the best out of me and yep. gave me my chance, and I get along well with Smithy. But he gets he gets he in the players' heads, doesn't he? Yeah, but he Which got the best. Out, he got the best out of yeah. me, and he knew how to push my buttons and to make me get the best out of me and, and work. And and uh, you know, I'm forever thankful for him for giving me an opportunity, and and I learned so much under him. And you know, I got a lot of time and respect for him because he's done a lot of great things in the game. And yeah, um, he was he was good for me, and I and I and I still appreciate his opinion to this day. And being at Newcastle, I mean, um, what was that like being a Knights player in town? Because as I know, it's just it's a it's a goldfish. You know, anywhere you go, you know, you go for a drink at the at, you know. Any, well, and I'm just trying to think, well, but you know, the brewery, yeah, the brewery, yeah. Fanny's, Fanny's was, is gone, but you know what I mean? Like, but but you, back then, man, yeah. I was lucky, there was no camera phones, there was no social yes. media. Yeah. So, when I was back home, actually, my mate was telling me, he goes, you've come through the most... Golden era. Well, I want to say gold, but the most yeah. changes, because when, when we debuted, there was no social media, there was no... No Facebook, yeah. And then now, since I've retired, the whole landscape's changed. Yeah. So, I sort of feel a bit sorry for these young kids that... I feel sorry for them that's the wrong word but I just feel they've got to have their guard up a lot more now yes yeah um, which for me I, I didn't really have a care in the world because there was nothing really unless you got arrested or done something stupid then you're yeah. in trouble but sort of a bit of the, the innocent stuff you can get portrayed as being dumb if anything than, than bad that dumb 
dumb now means bad in the media yep. or in the social media world. Where back then it was just dumb because it didn't have the <laughs> it didn't have the sort of the the energy behind it or the yeah. or the you know the, the waves behind it. It was just things. So if you can market it and use social media to your being a positive thing, you've got a great you are you're a game changer. But also I think it can be a negative thing too if you don't know how to harness it or use it properly. We've only just seen this week, you know, the leak of a sex tape on the Eve of Origin. It's just yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You have to get a camcorder and stand on the yeah. on the way back That's in the day. Back, <laughs> in, back in the too VCR. Much, yeah. too, much, too much hassle to do about that back there. <laughs> um, but you obviously you did leave the Knights. Um, tell us about that. You, you moved to North Queensland. Yeah. That was under Wayne. No, nah, so I left just before Wayne got there. All right. Um, so that sort of before it all kicked off with Wayne yeah, and all, Tinkler and uh, all the shit at the fair. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, for me, I probably if I didn't get. It's a weird one because I didn't really want to leave Newcastle. Yep. But I was too comfortable there too. So it was one of those things that I don't know if I would have left if I didn't get pushed. So it was sort of one of the things where I half got pushed and that was sort of my ammunition to leave. Yep. Uh, so I went up to the Cowboys for two years, which was good. I didn't have the best time, like in terms of footy. You know, I had a lot of injuries and then my form suffered and just a lot of shit. Can I, sorry, I can't swear. No, you can just swear. A, That's all right. That's fine. Just no. a lot of shit. With, like, I've never been... I've never had injuries that bad. Yep. And then I'd never been dropped before. Yep. And I was just like... I couldn't get my head around it. And so I would have liked to have played more and given more there, but as it were, that's just how life is. Yeah. And how it was um, playing alongside JT, Jordan well, Thurston? Like, I mean... Yeah. You got you got Joey starting off, and then you got Jonathan Thurston, probably well, a future, an immortal yeah, and a future immortal. That's, that's the thing now. Like I look back on the blokes I've played with, yeah, and it's not necessarily like yeah, it's great playing with them, but like I said, training with them every day, talking to them about things that they we do in training every day. People would pay thousands of dollars to have that experience now. That's you why know. I look back, and I'm so fortunate. Probably the two best halfbacks ever to play the game. I played yeah. outside them, you know, for, for running off them, yeah. yeah making them look good <laughs> nah, nah you know what I mean like those guys are just yeah once in a generation players oh definitely you know Matty Bowen that type of bloke how he plays instinctively in that but there is actually a lot of science and method behind why he does things um, that's like when I, when I coach now it just all comes out of me yep and I I knew I knew a lot about footy but as soon as I start talking about it and I take a step back and go that just come out of my mouth and it's just in, it's just been yeah. years and years of being you know trying to like doing stuff with edges now and I talk to the halves because I know what a back row wants but also know what the halves want because yep. I've played with the good halves yep. so that's sort of yeah I don't know it's been good man I've been lucky to play with some good players yeah and you you played you know Prime Minister's yep. 13 you know, team captain by Heimar, Nathan Heimarsh Heimar, yeah. you played Australian schoolboys with you know some some origin and tests who went on to play origin and tests and yep. Yeah, Indigenous All Stars as well. Yeah, I mean Wendell yeah. Saylor and you know those guys playing with yeah. those guys. Playing like we went in those All Stars games we played with like Scotty Prince was usually the halfback and JT was the six. Yep. So they're just very contrasting players, but the amount of stuff you learn off both of them and why they do things and what they want to achieve in the game and why they want to fix that bloke and make that bloke turn his hips and it's just like fire out, man. You just in awe of them. And then I was like our left edge one year was me in the back row, Thurston at seven. Greg Inglis was the centre <laughs> and then I think it might have been Gerald Yo Yee or yeah. someone like that was on the wing and I was just like fire out right, man this is unbelievable you know just was, world class players were you in the first I was in the, the first three I played the first three I mean what was because it's obviously it, they stopped it for a couple of years it's come back this year yeah. um, to play the Mary and yeah. there's, there's a sort of a rise of oh, I don't know what the best way to, to talk about it, the indigenous sort of Talk about reconciliation yeah. and it's much will come, but what was that like at first initially? Because that that's you know pretty groundbreaking. Yeah, because Preston Campbell played in our team and he was yep. he was the he was sort of the, the leader, wasn't he? Robin. He yep. was his, his concept, and for him to play in it and for him to talk about it when we were in camp and what it meant to him and um, what it meant to all of us as we all shared our stories and the fact that our whole motto was based on one brother uh, one brother bleeds all brother bleeds. Yep. that's what it meant to everyone. So the fact that it's back now, and um, it's not just about the game, mate. It's about the whole week 
the whole yep. the issues around it all the yeah it's so much bigger than a game and to be a part of it the inaugural one and then the following few years was was for me very special and and now I think they've done it properly with the with the multi game I'd like yeah to that see, was that I'd was like fantastic see, I'd like to see a Pacific Islander perhaps game yeah yeah. Like you could almost go an indigenous with a half Maori, half Aboriginal versus Pacific Islander, Fiji, Tonga, Samoa. Yep. Something like that would be cool. But I think they're on the right track for this year, next few years. The, the, the Maldives and the indigenous, I think that's good, man. I think that puts a bit more meaning to it because it's two really good cultures and two, um, two cultures that give a lot to the sport, but also the sport gives a lot of opportunity to these cultures as well. And for you, it's your mum. Your mum's English. Yep. And your dad's Aboriginal. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what? What's his sort of connection, uh, tribe-wise? Or so he's, his... he was, you know, born and raised in the Blue Mountains. Yep. Um, until he moved out and then went in the army. Then he's been he's everywhere. Been but yep. um, he he grew up there. Um, mum was mum was born here in Liverpool. So, <laughs> so you've got a great mix. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm just I'm a bit of bit of everything. So. <laughs> so um, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it, you know, I wouldn't change it to who I am. Yeah, and, no, no, definitely. Uh, being being here in England now is sort of, uh, you know, I grew up in Australia as my, on my father's side, and now you know, living in England on my mother's side, it's sort of a nice bit of um, equalness, if you will. Yeah, definitely. Well, one of the things I guess that's come up uh, uh, this week with Origin is the is the anthem, and you know, a few of the mm. Indigenous boys saying they won't sing it. Have you yeah. got a Have you got a take on that? Um, I don't think it's. I think it's been. It seems like in Australia, it's been. It hasn't been a, as big a fuss as like you know, say like in America with um yeah. Copernicus in the in the NFL. It's it's just it's just not a it's just not inclusive of everyone. Yeah. You know, and as a First Nations people, I think we deserve a little bit more recognition. Yeah. Now I know that's how it's been and how it's always been, but I think. Times are changing. Times can change. Yeah. Things can change that. Definitely. Um, I think there should be a little bit of at least acknowledgement in it. Yeah. For First Nations people. I think. Oh yeah. I think last people. I definitely agree with you. I think most yeah. people would. And I, I don't want to be one of those blokes that is one of them because I'm half Aboriginal, half white. I don't want to be that guy that's like, you know, I, I don't want to have a foot in both camps, but I do believe that it doesn't. It isn't a. Tr- it isn't a true. Mm reflection of Australia and, and the First Nations people. That's so. it. And I think something that should be inclusive, I mean, it's a national anthem. Why you'd want to exclude or alienate a section exactly. of the population. And especially yeah. First Nations, that's the different thing. Yeah. Well. yeah, That's the whole issue behind is that we're the, we're the First Nations people. That yeah. should be enough to change it regardless. And I, think, my, yeah. I think one of the good things with Rugby League is it's definitely tries to be as inclusive or is trying you know particularly with the indigenous community yeah. but you know with women and yeah, you know yeah, all yeah, sorts of things yeah. yeah and i'm not saying you have to change the whole song but maybe i'm not a songwriter but <laughs> a verse just acknowledging it or something yeah, yeah. And that's that's all definitely well um just on your, your cowboys move yeah you end up coming to whole kr um yeah tell us tell us about that yeah, so how, sandy, how was your time yeah. there sandy was the coach i had him at newcastle yep. And he just said, what are you doing? And I just pottered about. <laughs> he, to come. he knew I had an English passport, so he got the head job at KR and he asked if I wanted to come over. And I was, I thought I was, I was only 25, I think, at that stage. Um, but yeah, I thought, yeah, I'll go and have a crack. Um, and I, we, it was only myself, my wife and my son at that stage. And yep. Really enjoyed it. But my wife had some, some pretty bad health issues. Yep. And it sort of hit home. We were over in Hull with no one, no real friends, no real family, nothing. And you know the, the health issues she had, she had to spend weeks at hospital and things like that. And I had to be the, the man of the house and take her home, uh, back to Australia. And, and your you son know, would have been what a toddler. Son was only three. Yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. And I got a lot of, um, a lot of shit and a lot of slack off the fans there, you know. And that that comes part of the territory. And I and I accept that's part of the territory but I just wish I could have told the truth at the time that that was the reason why Yeah. that I had to be the bad guy in, your, in the fans eyes in the club's eyes I had to be the bad guy but for my wife and my son I had to be the man so for me that was sort of it wasn't a hard time it was just you know as a player you sometimes just want to come out and defend yourself and defend, yeah. defend your family or defend a lot of people team. don't know fans no, don't know what's going no, on exactly. in your it's life it's business or... to be fair yeah, it's that's a personal true. issue but I sometimes wish I could just 
this is what's going on, blah, blah, yeah. blah, and then just get off my back. But you can't do it, and I accept that. That's the, that's the territory we're in. And, you know, we ended up coming home for a year. My wife got back on track with health and then had a fun year at the Tigers and then ended up coming back to Salford. And that's when the shit really hit the fan because everyone said, oh, you went home because you were homesick, blah, blah, blah. And I, again, I just wish I could have defended myself, but you can't, and that's the territory we're in. But hey-ho. <laughs> yeah, you move on. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it, is, it is a bit sad, like with the... Um, Callum Watkins news that broke last couple of days. Yeah. I mean, I've been on Twitter about people going, oh, he's finished and all this sort of thing. It's just like, there isn't, people say players don't have loyalty. There isn't any loyalty. You know, he's got a contract yeah. which he, he's owed and he might not be playing well, but to write him off at 28. He's just had a knee recap, man. It's yeah. taking me a year to get better. I mean, he's won how many grand finals, yeah, played 20 odd twist matches. He'll probably go, to, if he doesn't get to the NRL. Yeah. He'll come to a Super League pub and he'll just keep. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be bad for. It's just people have very short memories. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so. so yeah, you, you go to the Tigers. I mean, wasn't I probably the best with the Mick Potter and nah. then JT and Farrer and you know, yeah. there's a lot of stuff going off off there. But you I, you come yeah. to you come to Salford and yeah, I love my time at Tigers. It was great. I busted my hand. So yeah, you didn't put. I missed 12 weeks with my hand. Is that your finger? Yeah, that's it. So that's <laughs> it. I ripped the tennis, so I missed three months right in the middle of the year. Wow. So that's halted me and stuffed me around a bit. And yeah, and I only signed a one year at the Tigers, and I got offered another deal there to stay there, but yep. I don't know, it wasn't worth the, worth it. And then sort of came here, came back to England in Salford. And, um, the Marwin days. Yeah, Marwin was that, there. That um, was, uh, how, how was that experience? Yeah. Mate, at the, we got on like a house on fire. Yep. Um, but as time goes on and, and, you know, sometimes results don't go your way and um, things happen, at the end of the day, it's it's a business. It's a, you know, as players, we, we always rip in and we always do our best. And sometimes um, either fans, people in the club, whatever, might not see that, but... Um, as a player, first and foremost, you don't want to let your teammates down, and you can you can put a heap of shit on a player, but they're never going to let their teammate down mm. or themselves because it's just a pride thing. It's a whole your teammates mean more to you than anything that could be said about you in the media or anything because you're the one sharing the field with them. So yeah, you're the one spilling blood exactly. and exactly. yeah on the so, field with. So no matter what happens off the field, your teammates you should always know that your teammates are always going to do their best for you, no matter what the club is is in for that bloke or whatever it doesn't matter so at the end of the day uh, I, again I enjoyed it met some really good people got to play with Adrian Morley got to you know play with some great players and things like that and, and you know great a great welcome back to, to, to England I guess and you go to Lee and again you kind of go roller coaster, big highs yep. massive lows I yep. mean coach sacked early on yeah it's a weird one that None of us really sort of seen it coming, and then, yep. um, you know, we put a lot of lot of um, a lot of players, a lot of staff into that promotional year, and we ended up getting promoted, which was, which was, mate, to me, still that's still probably one of the best things I've been a part of. Yeah, living in Lee, playing with Lee born and raised players, how much it meant to them. Yep. How much it meant to Derek, how much you know, effort and money he put into it, uh, and time and that, and then you know, obviously the staff, you know. Ando being a lead lad, all those blokes that were part of it, it meant so much to the town. And like for me, I'll never forget that. I thought that was the ground. I thought that was one of the best things I could achieve. And for, for me, that was sort of the grand final I never won, which was the yeah, promotion. yeah. Uh, and then yeah, we sort of go into Super League and uh, start pretty well. Yeah, we started alright. Yeah, and, uh, just if the format was in now. We wouldn't have been really good. When did you finish ninth? Second, no, I finished or tenth. tenth. I think. Yeah, but you know the, the middle eights or whatever. You know, we fell victim to it and uh, ended up being a you know myself and a number of players. Uh, the whole the whole contract thing is that you can get your uh, contract torn up. Torn up. Right, yeah, I still had another year and man, that hurt. To be honest, that hurt me. Well, because I wanted to stay at Lee. I wanted to rebuild yep. and get them promoted again next year. That was my plan. Uh, that was a lot of our plans, you know, Mickey Hyam who's back there now and yep. all these blokes who they let go, we sort of we all after the after the game was few said, Come on, well, if we stay we're gonna get it back promoted and we all sort of were back in and we're all back on board. Um and then over the next week or two, whatever it all unfolded, we all sort of, you know, got our got our marching orders and again 
I was I was hurt at the time, but I, I've learned as time goes on that everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And it's business, and you know now, you know now I, I, there's no animosity, there's no hard feelings. It is what it is. I would love to stay and help rebuild, but it gave me an opportunity to go to Toronto. So it's um, yeah, everything happens. Silver for a linings. Yeah, exactly, mate. Tell tell us just quickly about the million pound game. I and mean, when you played in that, I remember watching it. You guys were up. 4-2 at half time you look like you're in control and then <laughs> yeah I mean that that feeling because uh, it just yeah. it, it, it did seem pretty like uh, oh, trying to lose like, but yeah you're just like gut wrenching yeah, yeah and I suppose straight away you think well right we've lost and you think far out what's going to happen now like <laughs> there's that uncertainty it's mm. like have I got a job now no, have I not got a job do mm. I have to go look do I have to do this like Far out. What's next? That's probably the hardest thing was the amount of uncertainty around it. Um, but like, it is what it is, and it's pretty pretty ordinary system. But you're glad to see the back of it by the sounds of it. I don't mind if, if you even have the million pound game. I don't mind it. Yep. But the players' contracts need to be guaranteed. Or the, yeah. There needs to be some. I know. So with parachute payments, etc., it needs to go looking after those blokes that lose everything. You know, I lost half. I ended up signing for Toronto for half the money I was on it. Yeah, wow. Because yeah. the, there was no money left. Everyone's kitty had gone. Yeah. That many blokes went for half the money or less or whatever yeah. for an opportunity because the salary caps were all full or quota spots. Is a That's the thing. There's no... All, all the all recruitment's the done by October. October. Yeah, so yeah. There's no... The, so so the club will get a 500 grand parachute payment, but then if you've already flipped those... If you've already got rid of those blokes, well, then they're mm. out on the streets. So that's the only qualm I've got is that I think the RFL or whoever is in charge can put that like whoever gets relegated this year, hmm. I think they're that whoever whatever the club wants to do they get relegated. They need to make sure that if they're flicking blokes they get compensated in some. Well, that um, with no union effectively that there yeah. is a union, but there isn't really a union. Yeah. It just players, yeah. it just get you know used and abused. I, I see over here compared to the RLPA in Australia where yeah. it's so so powerful. Yeah. You know players get treated you know very fairly yeah, yeah it's just different mate just different manpower and resources and whatnot. but uh, yeah I don't mind promotion and relegation but I just think the relegated team needs to be looked after a bit better so you, you go to Toronto when obviously you know Paul yeah the whole Toronto experience tell us tell us about that because you you went over to, to Canada I think when you were injured and did a lot of promo work yeah. I mean yeah what, what, what was the whole experience like man I loved it it was such a good way to go out like yeah, your last, your last year, yeah, yeah. Like, how passionate and how much they embrace it over there. Like, yeah. nine, ten thousand there now, it's just amazing. And the city's beautiful, the people are beautiful, the food's great. Uh, it's just a awesome, awesome place to be a part of. And I just wish some people would just buy into it and just not be so negative about it and just embrace it because they're here, yep. they're here to stay for the immediate future. So, whinging about them and that isn't going to solve anything. It's like this Ottawa and the New York bids and that. Don't whinge about it. Just get on with it and enjoy them because it's not winding about them and, and running them down. It's just it's not going to prove anything because they're here to stay pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> that that game experience at um, in Toronto. Yeah, tell us about that because I I haven't been, but you watch it and it's like it's like like rugby sevens, isn't it? Like everyone's yeah. on the piss and so there's beer like, tents yeah. and. It's, it's not. It's not like a normal rugby no. league game. Yeah, and it never rained once. The twelve thirteen game. <laughs> it always it always looks warm. Yeah, so it's like you go there. We played at four thirty on Saturdays. Now, yep. I think the beer garden opened at four or three thirty at the one of the ends. Yep. So that opened. You'd be in warm up and everyone be charging, having beers and that. And you play a game, and the, we finished like six thirty. And then that beer garden would stay open until I think maybe seven or six thirty. So it's everyone goes DJ. there. DJ. Everyone goes there, has a few beers, and just in the middle, there's a game of footy. Yeah. And they go back to the beginning. <laughs> it's like it's just so North America is no sport. They know how to put on. Yeah. The yeah. And that's the difference is that you can go to a game here. Uh, I'm not going to name somewhere, but somewhere like a championship team here, and it's dead, it's still Oh, it's not boring. Super League games. Super yeah, League games. same. You go there, you go to an event, and there's a game of footy they've got. It's just an enjoy, much more enjoyable yeah, experience. Yeah. If your team loses, it doesn't matter because you've still had a great day from the event. You're obviously going to piss off your team loss, but the event is just as good as if you had a one, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, that, it has, from what you were saying just before, man, some of that I've... Um, had a bit of contact with some some of the Toronto fans in Canada. I mean, yeah. the passion of them is is amazing, and they are. 
I wouldn't say they're naive, but they're probably innocent to some of the rugby good. league. No, uh, they are, they are. But no, but but that's a good thing they because are. they, you know, I mean, I'm I'm from Newcastle yeah. and you grow up in it, and you know, you my mum's family are all from Manly, so they're all see, you know, going to bookie. You know all that, not crap, but you know what I mean. But <laughs> it is that they bring that enthusiasm and that they're excitement. Them. Yeah, that's it. They yeah, kill with kindness, man. they do. They do they kill. Yeah, yeah. With kindness, yeah. and that's the thing. Like. I've been trolled by a couple, but most of them are very kind. <laughs> yeah, I bet you they, they polite about it. Oh, no, they are. They, they seem... I, I can't wait to go to a game tomorrow because they do seem like generally good people. They are, mate. They, yeah. are, they generally are. And the thing is, it's like... And it seems like a beautiful city. It is, mate. Yeah. It's top notch. Yeah. And, mate, I hope it kicks off. I hope it really... Longevity because, yeah, I just think it brings a lot. All facets, TV, sponsorship, money... More opportunity for more players and coaches as well. Yeah. You know, more teams, more players can get opportunities. And, you know, people always whinge about, oh, that means these folks who are working are going to miss two days of work on Monday and Friday to go there. So I guarantee you they're happy to go to Toronto yeah, for a week exactly. and pay a trip to play down footy. And yeah. How can you have that argument? Ask the players. They're stoked to be going there. Yeah. And would you, would you like to go to Barrow or, no offence, you know, no. Batley, or would you like to travel to one of the best cities in the world? And, so don't you know, them. yeah. Yeah, no it, brainer. and that's that's what rugby league, well, professional sport. You got to offer players those opportunities. Like, no what brainer. what are you what are you in it for? You yeah. know, for the experiences. Yeah, yeah. and but just on your time though, at that season was it the first game you break your hand? Yeah, so you, you take. I remember watching watch this. You take a ridiculous intercept and you run about sixty meters and score. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Give me a bit more. The slowest back, the slowest back row in the comp. No, but I mean, it was yeah, outrageous. No, actually, <laughs> that was outrageous intercept try. Yeah. Oh, well, I said to Benny Reynolds after the game, I said, mate, if you had put a grubber in, I was no chance of getting that. <laughs> but you've played with your strength because I'm tall. That was all it was. <laughs> I can't bend down that low to get a grubber, I can jump high. That's about it. Um, yeah, I, that was one of those games, man, where I learned that. And that was, that was a real. Like because of because it was Lee yeah, and obviously and there's so many ex Lee players in Toronto it was quite was bitter. Like, when I scored that try, yep. I ran to the north end to score it, and that's where the fans were. And as soon as I scored that try, I put my head down. I didn't want to celebrate. I didn't want to yep. give them any ammunition just because I've been. I, I didn't want to disrespect anyone. Yeah. Yes, it hurt me getting uh, let go, but I didn't want to disrespect anyone, especially the fans on that end. So I straight away put my head down, and everyone came in. And, you know, celebrating that, but that was one thing that I did. I, I wanted to carry myself in a manner that I could look back now and be proud of. Yeah, I didn't want to layer up and carry on and give them the big what or whatever. I just wanted to go about my business, and for me, it was just business. That's all it was. Yeah, there was no emotion, there was no nothing, it was just business. And you know, I still live in Lee. Um, well, that's what I say. I mean, yeah. you, if you, if you didn't have an affinity with the place, yeah. or you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't still, be living I've here. I still got an affinity with, with the with the, the league club. Yeah. Because the promotional thing. Yeah. I still love the town. Like I still love the town. Live in the town. I don't. Yeah. We don't have any plans of moving. Yeah. So, I didn't want to disrespect anyone, you know, or or the. I didn't want. I didn't want to tarnish my name either by ruining uh, ruining the good work we've done yes. two years before. Yeah. yeah. By being a dickhead. Yeah. No, 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 definitely. But you, yeah, you injure your hand yeah. and you still, yeah, still, t- <laughs> what did you actually do? What did you do? So I, I, I tore the ligaments in my wrist there. So now it's fused so it doesn't go backwards. It just stays like that. Oh, it goes wow. like that. People can't obviously see, no, but know, you yeah. can't, you can't bend. <laughs> so like trying to open, like push a door open. I've got to use my knuckles to push it open or use my right hand. And this, this is, pro- yeah, this sucks, man. It just day to day stuff hurts. And every game when well, I that- come back, Tell us, tell us about that. So you what, 12, 13 years, you've yeah. obviously got that finger and your right hand that's yeah. that's fucked, that's fused basically. Now. I've got my thumb that's fused, the big plate. Yeah, yeah, take us through the injury. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, seriously, yeah. well, well, how many surgeries or, you know, injuries have you had? So in 13 to... years, I've had both my ankles cleaned out, both my knees cleaned out, I've had a hip arthroscope, I've had a shoulder reco, I've had my thumb reconstructed twice, that tendon fixed, and now I... That on the other finger tendon fixed. That was the same injury on that wrist. And now my wrist fused. Wow. So for me, it's like my body's a bit of a mess, but I wouldn't change a thing because it is what it is. It means that I had a dig and <laughs> but that's, that's, why, that's, that's why my son's playing football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but people don't, most people don't realise, no. um, you know, the, what you have and what you have to put your body through. Yeah. Um, I think, like, the sacrifices. Yeah. And like when I came back with my wrist, 
before every game or seven uh, local anesthetic, like just local painkiller. Just to get through the game. So every game, the last 20 odd games or whatever it was, just to play. And I was just, I hate needles at the best of times. And I was just like over it. I was sick of being a pincushion. And that, the little things just started adding up. When I was younger, I was, I'd have a sh- needle in my, sh- my AC or my shoulder mm. or whatever. And he was like, yeah, fuck yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm a young man, I can smash it, still go hard. Now I'm like stuck this man. I hate needles. I'm just over it. And you got my needle done before a game. Was like this sucks. <laughs> you got another 40, 50 years ahead of you. And yeah, and that's, that's the, the thing, thing. You know. Yeah. So I don't want to be completely wrecked. Well, there, that's the thing. There, there are people out there, you know, whether it be dementia from head yeah. knocks or whatever. You know, can't walk or yeah. you know, yeah. it's a tough game. Like, yeah. like Harrison Hansen, he's probably one of the toughest blokes I've ever played, and his hands and wrists are a mess. Yeah. But he's just too tough for his own good. <laughs> He's just a fucking fruit, just off his head. I'm with him at witness now, and he's just, I mean, all right, I don't know how he does it, but. Right. Yeah, so he just still does it, mate, yeah. With Toronto, obviously, you were, you were, I think, injured for the. Toronto. Yeah, I mean, um, tell us, obviously, the second million pound game. I think you were injured for the yeah. Toronto one, but you were, were you there? Were you in yeah, Toronto? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, just one, of, one so. of the worst games of footy ever, and yeah. everyone yeah. expected Toronto to win, and yeah. Would have been just gutting again. Yeah, it wasn't nice, mate, but I truly believe that that was the best thing that could have happened to him as well. Yep. Hindsight, looking back, I feel that I think, I think they've got a better squad this year. I think they seem a different team watching yeah, them, yeah. yeah. They've got a better squad. I think the off-field stuff in terms of like um, the office staff, the marketing, all that yep. stuff has got another year of experience. The ground staff, everyone, everyone's got a whole another year of experience before the big time. Yep. I just think that'll help them... Uh, in the long run, I think it's probably... Yes, it hurt at the time, but I feel that also it's probably a blessing in disguise too. Do you think this year... I mean, obviously, it's another one-off game if they, if they get to the final, but you think this year will be the year they get up? I can't really see anything. Yeah. They do, they do seem a class a class above. I mean, anything can happen in a one-off game, as we know, but yeah. they yeah they do seem to have sort of a, a harder edge and, and defensively just you know so Who's much better. game played? Is I haven't seen that confirmed. I, there was talk of Headingley, but I don't think it's been actually oh, announced. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, you'd sort of think if you win the, you know, win the you're the top ranked team, you, you win the major team, you get to host it. But yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. It's hard to see. It's them and daylight second. Yeah, but Toulouse have knocked them off. Um, they knocked them off over there. Well, no one would have tipped London last no, year. London I mean, you know, it's a one-off thing, mate. And, yeah. Um, that that that. Back end of that year was pretty tough. We were in Toronto every other weekend. Yep. So we did a lot of flying. Eight, nine weeks we did a lot of flying. Uh, I'm not saying that's an excuse, but it was a long two months. So, yeah, I think it's happened for a reason. But And you think if, if they can get into Super League next year, that will just sort of kick it to another level, you, you think, in terms of crowds and, and the attention and, you know, I mean, if you've got... A thousand lead fans or a thousand Wigan fans throw keep, over. I think they keep winning, yes. Yeah. That, that's going to be the challenge, is that they've lost only a couple of games in the last few years. That's now when they're stick, stepping up with the Super League teams, is that the, if they can keep winning and yeah. bring a thousand Leeds fans, thousand Warrington, blah, blah, yeah, for sure, but it's up to them now to um, I mean, keep David Argyle said he wants to get Sonny Bill Williams. I mean, the ambition of the guy is, yeah. is pretty scary. Yeah. yeah, he's very ambitious and he knows what he's talking about, but I think everyone wants Sonny. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, that's what I mean. Those sort of guys that you know who are yeah. in the NRL, they ring you up and say, "What do you, you know?" Obviously, you're going to yeah. give them a ring endorsement. Of yeah. course, mate. Yeah, yeah. I, I think and that would that would be great for the whole comp. I mean, for Super League, if you, Sonny Bill Williams, yeah, it's so awesome. it takes it to another level. Yeah. yeah, he's a worldwide superstar. But I think there's a lot of, you know, I think if they keep winning, they'll be sweet regardless of who they've got. Yeah, winning, winning is what makes people come through the door. Yeah. So. I think they've built that good foundation of winning a lot of games and they've got a core fan base now, so big times they can actually keep doing that'll be sweet. I've uh, just run out of time, but thanks thanks for your time, Corey. Yeah, mate, thanks, and all the best in the future. Um you can get us on iTunes, Spreaker and Spotify. Uh, thank you.